Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together again. Come on, you can do better than that. All I want is you. All I need is you. So come in like the fire, come in like a flood. I don't care what it looks like because I'm so in love. Hallelujah. 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 Well, welcome to Dove Church, another Sunday. Glad to be here. Glad to worship with you. Glad to brag on Jesus another Sunday. We thank you for tuning in on us and looking us up. And we want you to like and subscribe, as well as send your comments. Let us know if we've been a blessing to you. We thank you for your financial support of this church and ministry and we thank you from the depths of our heart. We ask God to return it to you in kind 30, 60, and 100 fold that he would meet your needs supernaturally. And as usual, as we begin our lesson series, we just start by saying our confession. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand and we've asked people in church to bring their paper Bibles with them because we want you to turn. Amen. Amen. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. We, we adore you and we magnify you. And now we rebuke everything that is on assignment to stop this word from operating we come against the enemy because we are not ignorant of his devices. And we declare today that your word would spread and it would cause uh, kingdom advancement to happen in Jesus' name. And so now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And we all said together, amen. Amen. The topic today that I'm talking from is winning by any means necessary. Winning by any means necessary. Winning by any means necessary. One of my favorite passages of scripture is found in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, 19 through 21, 22. And it becomes the basic foundational scripture for the scripture lesson that's coming from Acts today, which is where we've been 
for the past month or so. And it says this, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 22. And it says, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. So I became one under the law to win those under the law. Reading on, to those who are without law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become, and this is the, the, the phrase that we are most familiar with out of this entire passage. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Now, when I read that, and then I'm going to read the last verse. He didn't say I became a sinner so I could be like them. Let's get clear. Yes, yeah, because some, some people think that I need to be with you in your stuff so that we can work it out together. When in actuality, when you trade into that place, you've lost all your power and authority to operate from the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm in it with them because I, I, you know, I ain't scared to be in here with them because I, you know, and then, you know, we, we, we just going to, we, we just going to smoke a little together. We're going to do a little few things together, but it, but it ain't no harm done. I got an objective. I'm going to win them to the kingdom. When is that? When you get out from under the table, get up or come to? Paul made it specific who he was becoming so that he could help them. Amen. Amen. Now this I do for, and here comes the, other, the, 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 the further clarification. Now this I do for the gospel's sake that I may be, be, be partaker of it with you. For the gospel's sake. That's the operative clause. So I can partake with you. I can partake with you in your weakness if I'm doing it for the gospel's sake. If you are under the law, if you are a Jew, if you are a Gentile, I can partake of it through the gospel with you. That means my ministry comes close enough to you to help. Amen? Amen. And if your ministry can't come close to people to help, you don't have a ministry. Let me further go on. I believe Paul is hitting on something in this passage of Scripture that should be practiced by the church today. That is... Being authentic in your personal ministry, but able to pivot successfully to defend the faith presenting Jesus on any level. The only folk that need Jesus is not always just the folk in your neighborhood. They do, but there is other levels where folk are at that you never approach, you get intimidated by. Case in point, when Jehovah Witnesses show up at your door, what is your recourse? A, you peep out the window, 
and don't answer the door. B, you open the door, but to tell them off. I'm already saved. I love God. I don't need nothing y'all got. Or C, you welcome an invitation to defend your faith. I believe the latter is what we do not do. You know why? Because it intimidates you. It intimidates you to have to explain what it is that you know about God because you don't think you have enough information because they're so well studied, they're going to hit the questions. And so before you know it, no, I don't want to go through all that. I don't want to go. I, I, all I know is I love Jesus and I'm all right. That's good getting in the door, but after you got saved, you had a job to do. That job is to brag on Jesus Christ. So, so you need to make yourself a student of the word so that you can ably defend your faith. Why do you believe the way you believe? Paul said, I have become all things to all men that I can win some. And then we'll pray for a witnessing opportunity and it shows up at the door. I know there's some pesty people at the malls and at, in the shopping markets and, and, and uh, the, the, the markets and places. And they say, say hey, babe, how you doing? And, and you say, uh-oh, this is one of them. They're going to start asking you about their salvation. And what we do, we get tight because we say, they ought to look at me and see I'm saved. Not necessarily. Because we all look alike now. Amen. Able to defend the faith. Somebody asks you why you are a Christian. Do you know why? Do you know how? And if you say, I feel it. When they ask you who, you, who is your pastor, tell them I don't have one. If you say, I feel it, I feel it. Because much of what happened to us, we didn't feel it. I didn't feel my decision to get saved. I got saved. There was no jerk, no nothing. I just, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And I further advanced myself into kingdom by moving into straight obedience and getting baptized. See, some people come give their life to the Lord, but they never open the door to kingdom by, by, by getting baptized. You have to be baptized. Are you out there? Does that make sense? Because everywhere they went in the New Testament, when they heard the word, where is water that I could, the Ethiopian the, uh, 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 unit, uh, uh, where, where's, where's water? Where is this? Where, where can I get baptized? How can I? Where? Because where, where? you got to get baptized. Amen. Because that means you are valid kingdom. Oh boy, you're looking at me like, oh Lord, Pastor. Paul defended the faith. We've gotten comfortable with certain signature behaviors that have been cultivated through church life. We don't even have to have a real experience with the anointing, but we know the click sound. If the organ does a certain dun 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 dun, Okay, I know what that means. We're get, <laughs> we getting ready to break wide in just a minute. And we don't do it on the first dun 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 dun. We wait about three down because we want to see who's going to get up first. 
These behaviors have become a, 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 a signature of anointing in ministry, but they're not necessarily. There's a statement that says this, because sometimes we do this too. You are singing to the choir. In other words, who you are trying to convince has long since been convinced and saved. So we spend good time convincing each other of how safe we are. Wow. Sometimes we need to be kicked out of our boxes of comfort, comfortable familiarities and challenged by a different crowd. This is where we find Paul in our life. And this is where you'll find out where you are. Get out of your comfortable element and see how well you fare. When you don't know anybody, it's not your same church culture. It's not traditionally what you've always done. But you're a Christian and you've been taught some things and you know some things. And you said and you've confessed, I'm saved. I love God. I, 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 but maybe God at some point will, will take you out of that environment and drop you in, in, in Athens, Greece, where they don't know nothing about your God and you have to explain your God to a, a bunch of intellectuals. This is where Paul found himself. In Athens, Greece. Cultural hub. Intellectual center of the world. Our New Testament is written in Greek. Spoken through Koneo Greek. When we went to seminary, there were two Classes and two study areas that, that, that people had a choice to, to, to operate in. And one was Hebrew, which is what the, the Bible is written in, the Old Testament. And then Greek, which is what the New Testament is written in. And amazingly, both languages are so pure and both writings are so pure. When I went back to the Holy Land, when I went to the Holy Land years ago, writings that were, I mean, eons of years old, 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 it could still be read. The Hebrew could be read. The Greek still could be read. Greek was the language of commerce. It was also the language of literate people. So Paul finds himself in the middle of a bunch of bubble heads. Heady folk. The folk you dodge. <laughs> oh, we get intimidated by them. What do you do? I'm a, I'm a this. Oh, okay. This is what Paul got a chance to minister in. Acts 17, 16 through 17. I, not, I might not make it through the whole text because I spent a lot of time explaining the introduction, and that was the introduction. <laughs> Acts 17, 16 and 17. And I'm, I'm, I'm operating with straight New King James Version today. If you have your Bibles... Use that. I forgot to tell them don't put the, the words up. <laughs> so you have help today. Say thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Does your Bible start with now while? Yes. Okay, I just need to see how many of you would say yes, you know. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens. His spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Let me stop there. Something ought to get you tore up when you find out that your city is overrun with idols. And if you think I'm just talking about a statue, you've missed it. 
It was a statue for real back then. But whatever our modern day idols are, they're with us. Cars, homes, degrees, all the stuff that we give stock to. I used to be amazed at people that asked God to bless them for a home and then they wouldn't come to church because they had to watch their house. Ask the one that gave you the house to watch the house. Moving on. Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile. When it said reason, he brought his, his concerns before them while starting a path of introducing them to information. And, and with the Gentile worshipers. Notice he started with the Jews and the Gentile worshipers. Not necessarily the Grecians. Although they were in Greek. But it was a specific group that he started with. He started with the church folk. And in the marketplace daily to those who happened to be there. To be provoked mean he was disturbed to action. Some things ought to disturb you to action. I don't like this, so I'm going to get active over this. And I hate to use this, but, but, but it makes the illustration. Just like last week when I had my, my, my incident uh, it, where my sugar dropped, it was like, 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 it provoked many of you in this congregation to go into action. Prayer, you start praying in the Holy Spirit. Other ones were all the way around me. Somebody was wiping the shine off my head. Bless that person. You, you. My wife eased a, 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 a fish into my hand, one of the little Swedish fish, and I thank her for that. You know, she she just squeezed it into my hand, and and then somebody else brought. Lynn sat next to me, and I had to pray because somebody needed to get her up after she. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I've been waiting all week. We all were wondering, say, who going to help Lynn up after she? <laughs> but I see by the end of the service, she made it. You, 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 you. Praise God. We just think of all the blessings. Amen. Now, and so he was provoked. He was provoked to do something just like you all were provoked to help. To get me back to where, and, and you succeeded. And I sat in the chair and did part of the message. Then, then, then I felt like standing up because I feel more comfortable. I flow when I stand and walk. What also provoked him was the mockery to God and his eternal plan for man. See, when you see stuff going wrong around you, it shouldn't just make you want to get mad at the person like, they crazy. They're, you know, we go off and say a bunch of split of deletives and some stuff we shouldn't say. But the thing that we ought to do is we ought to get mad because it, it, it affronts what we've been taught about the goodness of God. It should tighten you when they don't appreciate what you know about God. He's been my deliverer. He's been my helper. He's brought me out. It ought to make you tight when people don't honor God. And so he saw that kind of mockery. They were intellects, but they were mockers at the same time. And that's what you have to deal with as God sends you out. That's why you need to move beyond your comfortable place many times so that you can actually minister to somebody that rubs you the wrong way so you get a chance to just be provoked to tell them the real story about God. When was the last time you got upset at somebody? about the way that they were operating with what you know about God. 
I get mad just about at every funeral because they said God took her because he needed a rose in his rose garden and all that kind of crazy stuff. And he didn't do that because he needed a rose. When he needed a rose, he said rose. And also, while I'm on that page, stop telling people they're going to get wings. You will never have a wing unless it's a chicken wing. You will never have one. He made you a little better than an angel. The Bible says the angels, when God finished with you, they got jealous. You don't need wings. Because he said about you when you leave to go be with him finally, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's almost like I'm a Trekkie, a Star Trek, and I like that whole transporter system where it said, beam me up, Scotty. That's the way it's going to be. You just get beamed up. Absent from one place is present from another. You don't need wings for that. I'm sorry. Acts 17, 18 through 21. We're following this, this whole story. So we see Paul dealing with the Athenians. And here come two wild groups. These are the elite groups. These are the elite thought provokers in the area. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some said, what does this babbler want to say? See, they're mocking, they're low-rating. Already we're deciding that he's under us. What does babbler want to say? Are you there? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Arapakas, saying, may we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak. There's always somebody that's going to say, huh, maybe we, let's pick on them real good. What is this you're talking about? For you are bringing some strange thing to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time it, 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 this is a side note. For all the foreigners and Athenians who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. It was a cultural center where Paul was preaching from. He was preaching from the most praised place that you could come as a speaker and speak. That's the, the name of this place was also Mars Hill from where he preached his famous sermon that's listed in this passage. Let's talk about the Epicureans so you understand what their thought life was about because we have thinkers among us that have a thought pattern that's pervasive. And you have to be careful that you don't buy into it. Here is the Epicureans. They valued the most pleasure and peaceful life. Whatever brought, brought pleasure was okay. Free from pain, disturbing passions, and superstitious fears, including the fear of death. They said, ah, oh, don't worry about any of that. They did not deny the existence of God Believed that they had nothing, that, but they believed that God had nothing to do with man. That was then. What do we have now? Because that thought life is a thing that's been translated in the earth, sent to derail the kingdom of God. 
when anybody wants to not be a part of the kingdom, the first thing they say is, what has that got to do with me? Can we all get along? I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just taking care of me. I'm just doing me. Wow. The Stoics were pantheists. Morally sincere and high sense of duty. They gave the great artwork. They, they, they built great things. How many people do we know like that? They build museums. They build orphanages. They build more, you know. If there's an outrage, how dare they? They cultivate a spirit of proud dignity and believe that suicide was better than life lived with less dignity. Stoics believe that everything was God and God is in everything, including evil. Evil is God too. So they de technically believe in no particular direction. Whoever was talking good that day, oh, that's good. The next day, they're good too. The next day, oh, that's good too. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> then, then going on into our discussion, and some said, some mocked Paul because he did not speak with the philosophical nicety popular in Athens. People will discern your language and say, mm, I don't know. He split a verb. I don't think he's quite educated. Something's missing there. He's not quite where we were. And on top of that, he's proclaiming some exotic foreign gods to a set of people who knew about a bunch of gods. He preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing but either to tell or hear some strange new thing. Even though they were tore up about it, they still want to hear about it. Because I got to first be the first one to know that I heard about that. I already know about that. I already got that. I heard that yesterday. I heard that last year. So the novelty of, of Paul's message brought him an invitation to speak at Mars Hill. Y'all still there? Yes. Acts 17, 22 to 23. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with the inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore the one whom you worship without knowing him. I proclaim. Paul didn't start out the gate busting him out with scripture. He didn't say thus saith the Lord. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus or else you're going to hell. He didn't start out by that. He said, I believe, perceive that you are a religious community. And even when I looked at your altar, you had something that I could attach something to. The unknown God. Yeah, that, that unknown God that you're talking about, I already know him. Come on, come on, come on. Is it possible that sometimes you end up serving the, the unknown God when you don't want to? You still serve in him anyway, and that's what they were doing. Because when they didn't have a name for certain gods, they fell under the category of the unknown God. 
It was the catch basket for all the other gods. They didn't know that he was the only one and all the rest of them weren't anything. The unknown God. And so Paul in his brilliance say, we're on the same page with that. But let me tell you about what I know about my unknown God. Yeah. Yeah. See, um, at some point, you have to bring the distinction. Yeah. 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 Come on. Because yeah. some people say, I have a higher power. What are you talking about? Yeah. Are you talking about Somebody on another planet? A higher power? I'm still trying to get clear with what does a moment of silence mean? Or I'm holding a high thought for you. Are you thinking about me standing on a ladder? Because we don't want to acknowledge the unknown God. <laughs> Are you out there? The unknown God who is God. That when Moses asked him who he was, he said, I am. Oh, don't mess me up today. <laughs> And in my I amness, I am the only one that is. <laughs> Does that make sense? When he told them they were religious, he didn't mean it in a positive way. Religion can lead you away from God. You can be religious but not in the Lord. And if we trust in false religion, it is little credit to say to us that we are religious. Whew. Let's talk about this unknown God. The unknown God then was the launching pad for Paul in this place. Just because he saw that. Then the Bible goes on to say something else in Acts 17, 24 to 29. This is when Paul gets the opportunity to tell the Athenians, the Jewish Athenians, and the Gentile Athenians who were considered the group of worshipers that he first addressed, now he's talking to everybody. He got a chance to tell them who God is. Yes. Once you get an entree and open up, you get, an, uh, you get a, an opportunity to brag on God. So here it is. Acts 17, 24 through 29. He starts in saying, not unknown God, but God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of heaven and earth. What? Does not dwell in temples made with hands. What? Nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. I don't worship God because he needs me. I worship him because I need him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with prayer. I need him. It was David that said, early in the morning I will seek you because I need you. Yeah. 
How many of you have ever gotten in trouble and say, God, you need my help? He don't need you. Just look at somebody and say, he really don't need you. <laughs> Tell him, cooperate with the plan. Because his plans is better than ours. How many of you know I'm right about that? How many of you know that when God works some things through, it's worked through good? And you don't need much to work with. That's why somebody got crazy and say he'll make a way out of. Come on. Because he's a way maker. Miracle worker, yes. promise keeper. Yes. <laughs> my, my who? My that is who? Yes. Come on, come on. <laughs> he needed anything. He gives to all life, breath and all things. And he has made from one blood, I'm continuing the reading, every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times. Come on. Just in case you think God missed it, your times are in his hand. Whatever you're going through, don't think it is foreign to God. He said, it's a pre-appointed time. Your times are in my hand. When you thought you were walking it out alone, he said, your times are in my hand. It's pre-appointed. I saw it before you got there. And I'm with you in it. Anybody was that comfortable to hear that today, just in case you thought, thought it was going to be a miss today? Or that it wasn't going to be all right. And the devil wants to keep making you think fatalistically that this is it. This is the big one. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this, this is the one that's going to get me. Well, God said, relax. Your times are in my hand. The opportunity is still waiting. What I have for you, I've set for your life. You're not dying to get it. You won't need it in heaven. But there's some things that he has assigned for your life, and you've got to go after them, and you've got to trust him in faith to believe that He, as you call those things that be not as though they were, God can deliver them to you. Your times are in the hand of the Lord. They're not in your enemy's hands. If anything, your enemy will help you. Anybody getting blessed yet? Amen. My God. And the boundaries of their dwelling so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him. Though he is not far from each one of us. For in him, my God, <laughs> who is it? In him we live, move. Paul borrowed that from two non-religious secular poets. That line. They looked it up and studied it. They said, Paul, you got that from some poets down in Greece. Oh God, I'm going to show you how God will work some stuff. Let me finish reading this here. As also some of your own poets have said. Here it is. Your poets said this. They said it before I preached it. For we are also his offspring. Therefore since we are the offspring of God. We ought not think 
that the divine nature is in the like of gold and silver or stone, some shaped by art and man's devising. In other words, how can you worship something that you made as a god? You sat down and fashioned it and you called it a god. It can't be nothing but a dead God because you couldn't blow life into it, but you would decide to worship it as a God and you made it. The ridiculousness of idols. Something you made, you were idolized. Something that was made for you, you idolized. Are you crazy? My God was not made. Where did he start at? He has no beginning. He has no end. I know the, the Genesis said in the beginning, but it is a misquotation because in the beginning implies that the beginning had a beginning. So in beginning, wherever that is, God created the heavens and the earth. I don't care where he started. He can start wherever he like because he God. And he made it. When I was a thought, he spoke life to the ground, brew breath into me, and I became a living creature. That's in beginning. Does this make sense? Acts 17, 30 through 31. And I'm rushing through. Anybody getting the point today? In this, these two verses, Paul especially says, this is what you must do because of who God is. God said, first of all, now, you want to get somebody that's super intelligent, upset, it's only one word you can use. Call them ignorant. Use something that demeans their intelligence. And he wasn't doing that. He was saying, truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked. But come on. Now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. By the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. He's saying, by the one he has authorized, Jesus Christ. He's saying, you can stay ignorant as long as you'd like, but judgment is coming. Keep, keep resting on, I didn't know. Keep resting on your brilliance and your philosophies that God is in everything and he made evil and, and, and he did this and, and all, can we all get along. Keep on resting in those days of ignorance because at one point he said judgment is coming. And the judgment is going to say, did not I say to you on, on, on October 9th? I see you tired. The last three verses, the last thing that happened, verses 32 and 34, I want to give you the, the three things that they did. Number one, some mocked. It's, it's in the scripture. Others delay. Can you come back and talk to us again? And some believed. Paul was only after group number three. It shook out that way. He came to preach to all of them. But in actuality, he only got to group number three. Some believed. 
And after I do everything I do, it's, it's, it's the some that believe that make the difference. Paul was that. I need to win by any means necessary till I get to the sum he don't care where you've been he don't care if you were in Cambridge or Harvard can you be a sum that believe if you're from the dregs of society you walk Michigan Avenue in various lifestyles you can be some. <laughs> Who am I talking to in this room that he caught and he found and he captured and he ransomed? And he made something out of your life. You are the psalm that believe. I have become all things to some, to all men, that I might win. Blessings to you today. Come on, give him a good praise in the house. If you are part of the sum today, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you've allowed to happen in this hour. If you are in our audience and you heard us minister this word, some mocked, some delayed, but some believe. The opportunity is here for you to believe. And if you don't mind, you can repeat these words after me. Help you get into the kingdom of God. And after you make this confession, find a good church. We're right at military in Horatio, Dove Church. Get baptized. Move into the kingdom. Repeat these words. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Jesus, be my Savior and Lord. Come into my heart today. Transform my life. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day you were born of a virgin. You died on a cross. Three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, I am saved in Jesus' name. Right now, the church is going to celebrate the decision you just made. Come on, church, let's celebrate. Hallelujah.